157th contact. Tuesday, December 22, 1981, 1.06 p.m. Quetzal says the reason for my appearance today is that I'll be away tomorrow and, thus, won't be able to get in touch with you. But on the other hand, I need the answers, after which we will make our decisions still today. Billy says lately, you are constantly in a hurry, and on the other hand, it keeps accumulating that you visit me in my office or at home. I am, indeed, very pleased about this, but I think it's a bit dangerous for you. Quetzal says not at all, my friend, because if you've closed all the entrances all around then I am very safe here, for my device here completely protects me from all vibrations. Billy says and how long does it offer you this protection? Quetzal says this device is, indeed, complicated, but it is an absolute operational security effect that lasts for several hours. Billy says how many hours? Quetzal says there's absolute security for four hours. Billy says then I am calmed. Quetzal says then it would now be nice for me if you could inform me about what decision Ferdinand has made. Billy says oh yes, of course. Still shortly before noon, I asked Ingrid about it, upon which she told me that Ferdinand is willing to follow your orders and conditions. Quetzal says then we will deal with the decisions till today, which will be positive, nevertheless, as I can already assure you now. But this also means that we would already begin with our alternatively directive activities still today, but which, in turn, means that Ferdinand must begin to meet our conditions as of today. First and foremost, the manual activity, which is a target performance of 11 and one half hours, becomes effective. I am aware that this is a strict order, nevertheless, it is absolutely necessary and is to be controlled by us. Unfortunately, we cannot take into consideration a failure to meet this condition because within the framework of the assistance provided by us for the attainment of the determinations and for their fulfillment, this effort and this initiative by Ferdinand are necessary. We are willing to do everything possible to help, in order to shorten the whole process of conversion to such an extent that the time amounts to a maximum of 17 years, but at least 11, until everything is led into the right direction and comes into full effect. But if Ferdinand doesn't fulfill the conditions, despite his promise, even if this is linked with all sorts of trouble, hardship and self-control for him, then we would have to discontinue the assistance for him. Billy says especially at the present time, these conditions make us difficulties, however, because their fulfillment is difficult to achieve. The days of winter are very short, which is why there aren't even eleven and one half hours of daylight. But on the other hand, I wonder whether Ingrid and the children should also be collectively involved in the resulting damage or damage to be paid for if Ferdinand, despite his promise, just doesn't fulfill this. I think that this wouldn't be right. Quetzal says for the last part of your question, you can be sure that you don't have to worry because the children and Ingrid won't be released from our assistance in the event that Ferdinand breaks his word. Ingrid is very far-sighted and strong in the fulfilling of her given word, and it should be further noted that she still makes a valiant effort to find and fulfill her destiny. Her relevant intuitions do not deceive her for by these, she has already recognized the truth for a long time. But unfortunately, these can no longer be fulfilled in their original form. Of the original fulfillment only a partial fulfillment is possible, which also lies within the scope of that which was already thoroughly explained by me and which was discussed between yourselves. These partial determinations could, even then, still find their fulfillment if Ferdinand would break his word. Billy says that calms me. But on the other hand, it would interest me as to whether I should pour Ingrid some clear wine over this, in terms of her actual destiny. I would like to calculate this, if I may dare. Unfortunately, I've had bad experiences with this, which is why I no longer want to get involved in it so easily, even though Ingrid has asked me for it and explained that this knowledge would only help her. Quetzal says it would. Indeed, be very good for her to know this, 
but it should be her sole secret. Nevertheless, the time for explaining this is still too early, because first, a few months of all-around effort should still pass before you inform her about this. The reason for this is so that we can first see how everything develops even though she would now already be able to cope with the truth. I will tell you the right time when you can give her the explanations. But until then, you should be silent, which is also of great importance for us, since we have to carry out our controls, which also must show us her reactions, since her undertaking involves much more difficulty than that of Ferdinand. Ingrid is practically placed between two fronts, both sides of which she must defend simultaneously, in order to achieve the final victory. Billy says that is clear to me, which I have also told her. She imagines everything, perhaps, a bit too easily. Quetzal says she is strong in her concentration and in the resulting fulfillment, but I have the same thoughts as you. She is, however, willing to do everything, so that everything still finds its correctness. Billy says that, too, is clear to me hence, we hope for the best. Quetzal says we also build on this. Billy says apparently, you have rummaged around in her a bit. Quetzal says that is of correctness, but only within the permissible framework. Billy says that is quite clear, but I would still like to know some data, if you will give me information, please. Quetzal says I counted on it. By this, you thinking of the forms of manual activity, in connection with learning activity and learning capacity. Billy says exactly, I would like to know how everything is when these things are unscrewed a little more according to your explanations, the necessary manual labor average of the human beings of the earth is a daily output of six to nine hours, which I can well imagine. This, nevertheless, can only really be an overall average, according to which the values must be different if only certain people are taken into account, right? Quetzal says that is of correctness. Billy says then tell me what values, for example, apply to the white race. Quetzal says you can't look at it like that because among the white earth human beings, various forms are already divisible. Billy says then tell me the average for Central Europeans, perhaps even for Russia and for real America. Quetzal says that question is precise the average for Central Europeans is 7 hours and 6 minutes, which equally applies to domestic Russia and domestic America, in which are also included all other races that have lived in these areas for centuries, such as the brown races in America, which were previously deported there as slaves. The same is also true, however, for the red races of real America. Billy says so it's different with the Australian Aborigines than with the whites living there. Quetzal says that is of correctness because the average for the white human beings in Australia is 8 hours and 14 minutes, while the Aborigines are still classified into the 12-hour workday. Billy says aha, so there are very stark differences, but how is it in our group? That would be something else that I'd like to know. Quetzal says I should only give you an average value for the group members. Billy says then do that, even though I think that the values for the individuals would, nevertheless, be good. Quetzal says anonymously, I can give individual values, which is certainly better. However, the overall average of the group members has been greatly reduced during the time at the center, so it is no longer at the normal 7 hours and 6 minutes of the Europeans. The current state is 6 hours and 43 minutes, which is the lowest average state of the earth at all, if I disregard your person, whom we can't even count in this and whose value is equal to ours of the Pleiades, who has an average of 1 hour and 58 minutes seen by earthly time calculation. Billy says then I still come out well with my working hours and, at least, with not neglecting manual work. However, you spoke just now of the fact that these data only apply to the residents of the center. Quetzal says that is of correctness, for this strong reduction has only arisen with them, while lower values have arisen with certain residents beyond the center or none at all, like with Margaret, Dorit, Carl, and Ida, who, so far, haven't acquired any values, 
which is very unfortunate. For the younger members, it is still too early to calculate data. Billy says well then, if you don't want to mention any names, then you can at least tell me whether a female or male member of the group has the highest and lowest state. Quetzal says that is good, yes, I can do that the lowest value of 7 hours and 4 and 1 half minutes belongs to a long-standing female group member who, nevertheless, isn't permanently present in the center but only intermittently over longer periods. Billy says you good, because with that remark, you mention the name at the same time. Quetzal says yes, that wasn't wise. But I've said it now, maybe it is effective. The highest value of 9 hours and 38 minutes, however, might repair this damage, which this time belongs to a male group member, if one disregards Ferdinand, who also isn't among the residents. Billy says that was better, my friend, if you still don't add an unwise remark. But now, it still comes to my mind that you didn't give me an answer, when I asked you about Ferdinand and the wintertime. Quetzal says that is of correctness. I haven't considered that if Ferdinand is truly willing, then he can perform his necessary manual activity, despite the winter time. He can begin his work at daybreak and then perform other work after nightfall in artificial light, when he can do no more work in the open. Billy says so you think that he should specifically do outdoor work? Quetzal says that is the most obvious thing for him, and he should now already strive for this also in the center for his time will start to run from today. Billy says also good, but now another question Roland and Jacobus, what values do they both have? For both of them, you can give the values calmly, I will accept the responsibility for this. Quetzal says Jacobus has a value of 9 hours and 13 minutes, while Roland still has no detailed calculations, for his value is still above the maximum value of the residents of the center. Regarding him, I could only tell you our likely result since I still lack the detailed calculations. His value is approximately 11 hours and 18 minutes. Billy says thanks, but now, it would be even more important for me to know how effective the meditation actually is on the daily study, which must be pursued together with work. Quetzal says for the average stage of development of the earth human beings, a daily meditation time of 20 minutes applies, but this was increased with the group members in the center for quicker advancement. Now, if a human being daily carries out his necessary 20 minute meditation, then he reduces his effective study time by this, or he performs, through the meditation, more in study than what would be necessary, which is only an advantage, nevertheless. The calculation of the effect of the meditation on the study results when a true meditation effort takes place, such that 4.7 minutes of study time result per 1 minute of meditation, as the meditation replaces this study time completely. 20 minutes of meditation in a pure form, therefore, save 94 minutes of effective study time. But moreover, I would just like to explain that, once again, it is necessary to appeal to all group members that they participate in the daily meditation of 20 minutes, when they lie down to rest. Billy says why, is this not being observed again? Quetzal says yes, with various ones unfortunately, but before it escapes my mind regarding Ferdinand, I would like to make another clarification accordance to his musing, he could bring it to fruition, that he also exercises a manual activity when he watches children. However, this cannot come to fruition because this activity is for Ingrid, who fulfills her required amount of work with this. Ferdinand's manual activity should be that of a manly person. Therefore, his work area is tough handwork. Billy says it's good that you speak of this Elizabeth and Yosef pose a problem to us. Ingrid came to the idea that Yosef could be a houseman and Elizabeth could go abroad to work. Quetzal says in this case, so I think, a role reversal wouldn't be acceptable. As I already explained to you once, it is, indeed, necessary for Elizabeth to learn to work less awkwardly and to develop herself, while Yosef, 
however, is well formed in this regard and, in addition, is capable of fulfilling the responsibilities of a household as well as raising children, as physically, a work of this kind is currently more acceptable for him than work that is very tough, while Elizabeth is currently more suited for more robust work or work that is otherwise tougher. Ingrid's idea, however, isn't good and is also much more illogical than her first one, about which we have ultimately spoken. Elizabeth belongs in the household and with the children, while Yosef should later pursue an activity outside the home. Billy says you see, I also think that exactly. In this way, everything could still, perhaps, be straightened out. Quetzal says you're wrong about that, for it could only change in certain things, and inappropriate determination can only come about, so for example, in relation to family life, if this can be formed by that. Billy says at any rate it's something. Quetzal says that is of correctness. Billy says your bucket there, your protective device, it's not as bulky as the one that you recently had with you. Is this a new development again? Quetzal says that is of correctness, today, I have this device here in operation for the first time. Billy says then you just counting on the fact that it functions. Quetzal says I can rely on it like you do with the, the materialization shafts of our ships, when you simply jump into them from impossible heights, in order to materialize on the earth again several kilometers below the hovering ship something that we would never do. Billy says you probably a bit timid. Quetzal says our dematerialization machinery works absolutely flawlessly, so we also don't have to fear. If we use this ourselves, however, then the security hatch is always closed, so we can't even see out. You, however, jump in each case when the hatch is open, and you look down for kilometers beneath you into the yawning depths to the ground. Billy says somehow, fear is, nevertheless, fun for me. You can, indeed, say it once again still a barbarian. That may be true, my friend, but even a barbarian is nice sometimes especially when one jumps into the void and suddenly sees thousands of meters of Earth's altitude rushing toward him even if this is only for a split second or for one or two seconds. Quetzal says truly barbaric. Billy says right, that had to come but still, it's nice. Quetzal says until we meet again, my friend, I am suddenly freezing. Billy says you rub it too soft. Bye, and tell the new black roses that I've been waiting a long time for them. Quetzal says they won't be able to visit you until they have finished their introductory instructions. Billy says okay, then greet them anyway. Until we meet again. The End